evening. Welcome to The Big Story. I'm Regina Lay. I'm Gretchen Hall. And I'm Riza Diaz. Tonight's Big Stories. A court orders the arrest and transfer to Pasig City Jail of Alice Guo, while the brother of Michael Yang, once the economic advisor of former President Rodrigo Duterte, is arrested for an immigration violation. Senator Bato de la Rosa slams former Iloilo City Mayor Jed Mabilog's testimony at the House Quad Committee hearing, calling it a demolition job. And the Lakas CMD and PDP Laban hold in National Assemblies today, gearing up for the 2025 midterm elections. Former Senator Laila Dilima announces a comeback as the lead nominee for the Liberal Party's party list arm. Alice Guo, now a household name, will now make her way to the Pasig City Jail following orders of the Pasig Regional Trial Court to move her from Camp Krame. Guo's business partners in Hongsheng and Zun Yuan Technology, including Representative Dennis Kunanan, are now also facing arrest. Let's get more details on these with Camille Samonte. She's reporting to us live in Pasig. Camille, what is the latest now on Alice Guo? Ladies, that the BJM has already prepared the cell where uh, former Bamban Mayor Alice Go will be placed here in a Pasig City Jail female dormitory following a warrant of arrest issued by the Pasig City Regional Trial Court Branch 167 that is for the qualified human trafficking case. Authorities say no special treatment will be given to Go and that she will be placed together with other inmates. After the Supreme Court transferred the case of qualified human trafficking against Alice Go to the Pasig City Regional Trial Court, the Pasig RTC Branch 167 issued a warrant of arrest against the former mayor earlier today. This is in connection to her involvement in the operations of a raided Pogo Hub in Bamban. The court ordered Go to be transferred to the Pasig City Jail female dormitory from the PNP Custodial Facility. Meanwhile, Malaysian National Walter Wong, currently detained at the Tarlac Provincial Jail Mill Dormitory, has has been ordered transferred to the Pasig City Jail Mill Dormitory. Wong was the former general manager of Zunyu One Technology and Hongsheng Gaming, which operated the Pogo Hub in Bamban. Also included in the arrest order are other accused individuals, such as Wang Ziyang, the alleged big boss of Pogos and a fugitive from China. Go's business partners Zhang Ruijin and Lin Baoying, who have been charged and convicted in a billion-dollar money laundering case in Singapore, have also been ordered arrested. The court has issued arrest warrants for other officials and incorporators of Hong Sheng and Zun Yuan, including the representative Dennis Kunanan. The court explained that they found sufficient grounds to hear the case against the accused. The arraignment and pretrial conference for Go and Wong is set for September 27 via video conferencing. According to Justice Secretary Boying Ramulia, the arrest warrants merely confirmed the findings of their own prosecutors of the involvement of Go and others in qualified trafficking. Ramulia also warned the remaining co-accused to immediately surrender without asking for any condition, emphasizing that the law will definitely catch up to them. The Bureau of Jail Management and Penology has prepared a cell for Go at the Pasig City Jail Female Dormitory. Each cell houses around 45 people and has bunk beds. Due to the limited space inside the cell, Go will have to sleep next to other inmates. Uh, ang kasya lamang po dito ay 36. So medyo mararamdaman po ang siksikan. We have no VIP treatment or special treatment sa BJMP. As a policy and practice, hindi po talaga yung ginagawa. Ladies, uh, Go is still undergoing a medical procedure in uh, PNP Kirame before she will be transferred here. In uh, Pasig City Jail, Go has posted a total of 540,000 bail for draft before the Valenzuela court. The BJMP, meanwhile, ensured Go security following alleged death threats received by the former mayor. Ladies? Well, thank you for those updates. That was Camille Samonte reporting live from Pasig City. At the same time she was ordered, arrested, and detained at Pasig City Jail, Alice Guo was in another court for another case. Guo was scheduled for arraignment today at Valenzuela Regional Trial Court Branch 282 for graft and corruption charges, but 
She was not able to enter a plea for this since her legal team has an unresolved motion before the Kapas Tarlac RTC, which was the former venue of the case. The Valenzuela court has given the prosecution team until September 25 to comment on this and rescheduled the arraignment and pre-trial of Guo to September 30. Still, Guo posted bail for two counts of graft charges before the Valenzuela RTC. But instead of 180,000 pesos, Judge Elena Amigo Amano tripled the bail to 540,000 pesos. Guo's lawyer said they'd rather have their client detained elsewhere than Valenzuela City Jail. We intend to post bail, kaya walang pambayad, no? kaya natagalan kasi uh, naghanap pa kami ng pambayad. Pero kasi nga, nasabi ko kanina, yung first and foremost consideration, safety. Ina-assess namin kung saan feel namin mas safe siya. So, uh, niroll out namin yung Valenzuela, nag-post kami ng bail. In our assessment, mas, mas delikado naman ang Valenzuela. So, the brother of Michael Yang, former President Duterte's economic advisor, has been arrested upon landing at the Naia 3 for an immigration violation. His name is Tony Yang, and his name was also brought up in the House Quad Committee hearing in relation to the Pogo investigation. Francis Orsho with the big story. Armed with a mission order, officers of the Bureau of Immigration and the Presidential Anti-Organized Crime Commission had Tony Yang cornered. Tony, otherwise known as Yang Jian Sin, is the older brother of Michael Yang economic advisor to former President Rodrigo Duterte. Tony Yang was nabbed immediately upon his arrival at the Naia Terminal 3 from Cagayan de Oro. According to PAOC, Yang violated the Philippine immigration law when he assumed a Filipino identity. Uh, siya ay isang Chinese national na nag-assume ng uh, Filipino name, yung Antonio Maestrado Lim. Lumalabas na isa siyang undesirable alien. Tony Yang's arrest came on the same day his name was mentioned in the House Quad Committee hearing. In Thursday's inquiry, it was revealed that he owns a company in Cagayan de Oro called Philippine Sanjia Steel Corporation. This company had a warehouse built in 2018, the same year that Pogo hubs in Porak, Pampanga and Bambantarlac were being constructed. Yang is also the owner of Alwana Compound in CDO, which housed an offshore gaming company. It is still uncertain how Tony Yang, a.k.a. Antonio Maestrado Lim, was able to own companies in the Philippines when he's not even a citizen. PAOC officials say they got to him right on time, believing Yang was just about to flee the country before his arrest. Seized from him were a few but very expensive items, a high-priced watch and pocket money of more than 1.4 million pesos. Yun ang tinitignan namin, ano? kasi medyo mainit na yung trail nila, eh, no? Um, ang tingin namin baka sumibat ito kaya inunahan na namin kaya siguro may, may dala siyang maraming pera kasi kung balak niyang umalis siguro uh, he will probably convert that into dollars What convinced authorities more that Tony Yang had plans to slip out of the country was a Chinese passport he was carrying under the name of Yang Jiansin from the birth certificate of Yang, now in Paok's possession, he was born in Misamis Oriental in 1970 with a note of late birth registration. That's when something clicked for Paok. Yung estilo na ginawa niya is the same uh, uh, style na ginawa ni uh, dating Mayor Alice Go, na ginawa ni uh, Cassandra, uh, Cassandra Ong, at uh, yung ibang mga Chinese na nahuli natin na, na nagpa-late registration, ano? At, uh, and then nagpalit uh, sila ng pangalan. Tony Yang will face inquest proceedings soon and will be held at the Paok Detention Facility for now. He could be transferred to another facility, but definitely his presence will be requested at the House Quad Committee. Leaders of the panel welcomed Yang's apprehension, saying he is key to putting the puzzle pieces together as they try to find linkages among pogos, dirty money and illegal drugs. Tony's brother, Michael Yang, has long been wanted at the inquiry. 
In fact, Quadcom has already ordered his detention for failing to attend in hearings despite repeated invitations. Since he is also being tagged in the 3.6 billion peso drug by bust in Mexico, Pampanga last year. But Michael Yang is believed to have fled to Dubai earlier this year. Mobile journalist Francis Orsho, we are One News. Meanwhile, foreign Pogo workers have only until October 15 to voluntarily leave the country. Now, Justice Undersecretary Nicolas T. said starting October 16, they will be downgraded to tourist visas. And those who refuse to exit the country by end of the year will face deportation. Now, some two to 3,000 foreign Pogo workers have already voluntarily uh, downgraded their visas. But based on Dole and Pagcor figures, there might be up to 30,000 workers in the sector. Doon sa foreign workers na nagtatabaw sa mga legal na pogo, parang may mga 2, 2 to 3,000 na daw ang nag-voluntary departure or nasa proseso na ng voluntary departure. Pero ang bilang dito, galing sa Dole at sa Pagcor, ay may mga 20 to 30,000 silang mga lisensyado sa kanila. At may iba pa bilang ang BI dito. Ano? Yusek T says they're also already looking into the culpability of Alice Go's lawyers over the fact that the NBI discovered that Go's specimen signature did not match the signature on the counter affidavit she filed. Recall that the notarization of the said affidavit was also cast into doubt after it emerged Go was not even in the country when it was notarized. Go herself also later admitted she signed the last page of that counter affidavit weeks before she fled the Philippines in July, raising questions over whether she or whether her lawyers knew of her plan. Ininvestigahan na namin ang posibleng pananagutan ng mga abogado na may kinalaman dito sa mga dito sa counter affidavit na to. So tuloy lang yung investigasyon tapos malalaman natin no, sa mga susunod na araw kung ano magiging bunga ng investigasyon na to. Talking about uh, Pogo workers, actually, uh, it, uh, in September 11, uh, the Department of Labor and Employment said that they have finished uh, profiling about 27,000 mm -hmm. Pogo workers and that there will actually be a job fair uh, in the first week of October to help the Filipino Pogo workers transition to a new mm -hmm. livelihood, a new source of livelihood. So, na tapos na yun. what would be interesting to see in that is I guess the details of that profiling. Ilan taon ba yung uh, madalas sa pogo we worker? Are, we asked that months ago. Ano it's skills? the vast majority women, very mm -hmm. young. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have families. And uh, the question that we asked the Dole at that time is whether there's going to be offers to train and upskill mm -hmm. because that's what they're going to need to move on to the next role. So because there is. Pogo work mm -hmm. is, I guess, very different, right? Mm -hmm. It's very repetitive. It's a. a, a back right, office technology mm -hmm. work so so, so Dola is offering that but what I haven't seen mm. though is the figure of their salaries well, from well, from that industry right. it has never we been released we shall right? find out maybe there would be a significant difference on mm. that matter well up next we'll be speaking with Liberal Party spokesperson Laila Delima as they prepare to enter the party list race in the 2025 elections that when the big story returns keep it here on One News Welcome back. You are still watching a big story here in One News. Two major political parties, well, I should say three, but held their national conventions or assemblies today as the start of the filing of certificates of candidacies loomed. First, uh, Democratic Party Lakas Christian Muslim Democrats or Lakas CMD held their uh, national convention at the Aguada residence in Malacanang today, presided over by party president House Speaker Martin Romaldes. He officially endorsed Senator Ramon Bong Revilla Jr. as their sole senatorial candidate for the 2025 midterm elections. Revilla is the party chairman. Lakas CMD says it now has over 4,000 members. 
speaking to party mates, Romualda said the CMD will remain President Bongbo Marcus's quote, reliable partner in pushing for policies and reforms that would benefit every Filipino. He also said, in 2025, we are not just fielding candidates, we are shaping the future. The CMD is proud to join the Alianza para Sabagong Pilipinas. This multi-party administration alliance will bring forth a formidable 12-man senatorial slate as well as candidates for provincial, congressional and city and municipal positions. All the way across the other side of the country, the once ruling PDP Lava National Assembly kicked off this evening at the De, Le De Leonor Inland Resort in Buhangin, Davao City. Party Chair, former President Rodrigo Duterte is expected at the event alongside members and officials from different regions in the country. Also expected to grace the event are Senators Bongo, uh, Davao City Mayor Baste Duterte, Senator Robin Padilla and Senator Bato de la Rosa. Also making their own candidate announcement today is the Liberal Party during their event at Club Filipino in San Juan. LP launched its own sectoral wing, the Mamamayang Liberal Party List. Now, gunning for a seat in the lower house are its candidates, former Senator Laila Dilima and former Congressman Erin Tanyada and Teddy Bagilat. Dilima has been cleared off all the drug charges filed against her during the Duterte regime. Now, she was released from her seven-year detention in June. Meanwhile, the party has formally announced Senator Kiko Pangilinan's Senate bid. As of now, he is the party's only official candidate. The party has already said before it is not aiming to field a full Senate slate. Joining us now to talk more about this uh, is former Senator Lila De Lima, spokesperson of the Liberal Party. Good evening. Senator De Lima, thanks for making time for us. Good evening, I under good I understand. ladies, Risa, Regina, Regina, and Gretchen. Good evening, ladies. <laughs> thanks for and making to our viewers. Thanks for making time for yes. us. Uh, let me get right to it. Um, you're going to be the lead nominee for ML, Mama Mayong uh, Liberal. Tell me what got you to this point where it made more sense to run as a party list nominee instead of running for a seat in the Senate. What got you to this point? Well, actually, to be well, actually, to be honest, and and, um, and I've been announcing this for a few months already whenever I'm asked, that I actually did not intend to run for any position, mm -hmm. for any post, whether it's editorial, whether it's party list, or what, whatever else, whatever mm -hmm. position, like local, etc. I did not intend, mm -hmm. uh, initially intend to run, uh, but um, I was committed to um, LP to help out uh, the, the party and also the ML or the Mama Mayang Liberal, which is the sectoral wing of the Liberal Party. But then um, I had to make a decision because people have been asking me what exactly is my plan. And I had to choose now between senatorial post or the party list. And uh, after much reflection and also consultation, uh, my, I, I decided that uh, I would go for a nominee of uh, one of the one of the nominees, the lead nominee for the ML or or Mama Mayang Liberal, the sectoral wing of the Liberal Party, because I I uh, I thought that uh, through this ML, we I am able to further pursue my advocacy is for social justice because this the ML is actually a multi-sectoral party list, mm. and that uh, that would be aligned also, or would be consistent, or would be um, uh, uh, would just reinforce the core values also uh, of the Liberal Party as a national a political party, a major mm. national political party. Because, you know, the, the, the actually ML has been uh, there for several years already. It's just the first time that it has been accredited by the COMLEC mm. and therefore um, qualified to run for the party list elections next year. So I, I thought that uh, through the, par the party list, the ML, I could further further um, um, bring up the um, agenda of the Liberal Party through the sectoral wing, and this time uh, reaching out to the marginalized sectors, because there are several sectors represented by the ML, and these are 
the workers, the farmers, the fisher folk, the women, the youth, the uh, LGBTQ, the LGBT plus Q, IA, 1A, and uh, also uh, indigenous peoples. So uh, these are multi-sectoral. These are sectoral formations whose interests are being uh, uh, pursued and uh, improved by uh, the um, various programs of the ML, and this time around to make it stronger, to make those advocacy stronger through appropriate pieces of legislation mm. respecting these various sectors. Right. Uh, uh, that's what I remember from uh, our previous interviews, uh, Senator DeLima, that you did not want to get back into politics anymore. But what, yes. what or who specifically uh, got you over the line? What, what was it that convinced you in the end? What or who specifically? Well, some, some friends and some allies mm. have actually um, convinced me that you should run again. You should choose between senatorial mm. and party list. Um, you have the narrative, you have the story, people know you, people remember you, people would, would they say that uh, um, I would get sympathy votes mm -hmm. and, and that I would further continue, I would, I would revive uh, my active involvement in uh, pursuing these advocacies through a platform. Because, you know, a citizen Laila will have lesser platform. Although I'm committed to pursue my core advocacies like human rights, justice, accountability. As a citizen Laila, I felt initially that I can really do it. But then after further thought, further reflection, I, I told myself and I, I agree with what some friends told me that you've got to have a platform to further pursue your advocacies. And I saw the ML as an appropriate and an ideal platform because of its focus on the marginalized mm. sectors, because the, um, the core uh, goal and the core advocacy of ML, uh, um, the, the, uh, the, the, the various advocacies, the aspirations of these sectors actually have one common goal, and that is social justice. Mm -hmm. Senator, I may ask what uh, sectors are under uh, ML. So ML, I thought Mobile Legends, <laughs> it's true. Yes, Mobile Legends. There's probably also a play in that. Though. But uh, how did it exist? Because you said this has been there for years now. Mm -hmm. And what sectors yes, exactly it are under it? Started, it's actually started 2014. 2014. Uh, gradually, there were various groups, sectoral groups, being formed and, and uh, performing certain activities. Um, and LP has officially recognized ML in 2021. And then it reaffirmed the recognition of ML as a sectoral wing in 2023. And it was only last year, um, December of last year, that we've actually we've um, ML has filed already a petition for accreditation in 20 in the 2022 elections, but the same was denied mm. by the COMELEC. Mm. So ML refiled this, this last December for purposes of next year's elections, mm. and in July of this year, COMELEC finally granted the accreditation to ML. But okay. the, the sectors involved, the sectors covered, are women, youth urban poor, um, farmers, fisher folk, LGBT, LGBTQIA, um, urban poor, and then um, indigenous mm. peoples. Okay. Uh, how will so those are the sectors. How will you differentiate yourself from the Liberal Party? And will you do the campaigning together? Will it also be the same color? Magsasabay po ba kayo? And also... Uh, I, I assume that your target is to get three seats, right, with uh, uh, Congressman Teddy Bagilat and yes, also yes. Uh, Mr. Erin Tanyada. Yes, Mama Mayang Liberal, while a sectoral wing, has actually a distinct and separate existence or personality.
But as a sectoral wing, its advocacies are aligned with the Liberal Party. Only that it's more focused on the marginalized sectors. Now, for purposes of the elections for next year, then we will have complementary roles, complementary uh, advantages for, 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 each, for, for, for each other, because the LP is the national, the major national political party fielding national candidates, and that is the, the, uh, the uh, Senate, and we have one official candidate so far, and then we would have local candidates from governor, vice governor, mayor, vice mayor, board members. Those are for the local candidates. Now, Congress, the House of Representatives through the party list. And of course, there will also be district representatives as candidates, as official candidates of LP as a major national political party. So that the district representatives are different from the party list representatives. And it is the first time that the LP would have its own uh, sectoral wing participating in the party list elections. This is the first time that ML is uh, participating because it has just been recently accredited. So we can always complement each other. We will have to plan out our strategies. We have to plan out exactly how we will run the campaign, but that is the difference. The major national political party with, with senatorial candidate, district representatives, and then local governments. Uh, okay. The party list, mm -hmm. the ML, is different because these are nominees. The, yes. the candidate right. in, under a party list system is the party list itself. And this, and this is ML. Party lists have nominees. And depending on the number of votes that are garnered by a particular party list, then we will know whether we will be entitled to one seat, two seats, or three seats, or not at all, if the, the party does not obtain the required number of votes. And you would need 2% or yes. lower, depended on the number of mm. na na 63 seats. Oh, oh. Okay. Oh, Senator, yes, um, yes. Tanungin na po rin. Mm -hmm. Yes. Pardon? Senator would also like to ask because so far Liberal Party has only announced Senator uh, Kiko Panghilinan as the only senatorial candidate. So far, what are the chances na madadagdagan pa po ito and when are we supposed to expect the others to announce their candidacy? We actually do not know we, we actually do not know at, at this point whether there would still be a uh, Liberal Party candidate. Although we, we would be having allied candidates. In fact, one of the resolutions adopted in the NECO, in the National Executive Council meeting of the LP this afternoon, aside from the resolution nominating Senator Kiko Pangilinan as the official candidate of LP for senator, mm -hmm. the, the um, candidacy of allied candidates like Senator Pamakino and also Attorney Chell Jokno. But uh, we can we can always add, the LP can always add uh, such allied candidates that it could or it would support. Uh, Senator Delima, since I already have you, I wonder if, you could, if I could ask you about something sensitive. There was breaking news just this afternoon that Attorney Barry Gutierrez had also confirmed to us that Vice President Sara Duterte had visited former Vice President Lenny Robredo in Naga City and he said uh, this was a personal, not political visit, but it did last about an hour. Uh, of course, you can imagine that it's made big news because we didn't even realize that the two Vice Presidents were speaking. I wonder if you could weigh in on that, please. I am not aware of that. I've just learned of that in, in the... Um online. I mean, the, um, just uh, about an hour ago, I, I read some online news items about that, but I have no knowledge about that as to exactly what was the visit all about. Um, of course, the Vice President Robredo has also announced that she's running for mayor of Naga City. Uh, yes. What, what, could you tell us what happened there? Um, for a time, there were expectations that she would 
again run for a national seat. Uh, were you not able to convince her to do so? Yes, unfortunately, we're not able to convince her. We were uh, convinced. We were trying to convince her if she could lead the senatorial slate. But she has she was she has decided to really go for the mayoral seat of Naga City because you know she wanted really to preserve the uh, legacy of uh, her late husband, former Secretary um, Robredo, Jess Robredo, and former mayor of uh, Naga City. So that was her decision. And uh, she really has preference for executive work and really working on the ground. I think she uh, she's happier um, holding such a position. So we tried, we tried, but to no avail. But we certainly respect her decision. But will she be with the, the Liberal Party, party still? Respects um, her decision. Okay. Yes. As a, as, a, as a local candidate, will she still be part of the Liberal Party? Uh, that's what we expect, mm. because she's still a member of the Liberal Party. Okay. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Shell Jokno and uh, Bamakino, are they running independently or they have yet to announce? Well, um, Bamakino, San, San Bamakino is part of the Kanti. Katipunan ng mga nagkakaisang Filipino. Mm -hmm. And then Attorney Chel Jokno is now a member of a Bayan party. And then uh, the past weeks, we, we see or we saw that uh, the three of them would be uh, going to places and that they are the official opposition candidates. But we don't have yet any official announcement mm. as to the candidacy of uh, Bamakino and mm. Chel Chokno. Mm. What we had earlier was the announcement of the candidacy of the Liberal Party member, mm. and that is Senator Kiko Pangilinan. But the two are considered to be allied candidates mm. if mm. and when they would indeed be running, and, and I guess they are. It, 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 it's, it's evident that they're also running for senator. And that's why we also had to issue that resolution supporting the allied candidacies of, of uh, Bamakino and uh, Chialjo. Does it make better sense to run independently with different parties or will it be better to band together as a... Checky Bam <laughs> under the, <Checky> the <laughs> Liberal Party. <laughs> Hashtag. We would prefer that they would join together, that they would, uh, you know, that it would be a coalition of the uh, opposition candidates because they are opposition candidates. There are, of course, advantages and disadvantages, but uh, it, would, it would be uh, more beneficial if they uh, join together. If they, if, if they really um, project themselves and present themselves as uh, allied candidates okay. for the process. Okay, we are going to have to leave that there for tonight. We thank you so much for taking time out to talk to us. That was Liberal, Liberal Party spokesperson, former Senator Laila de Lima. Meanwhile, Senator Bato de la Rosa said Iloilo City Mayor Jed Mabilog's testimony before the House Quadcom was part of a quote, demolition job. Demolition job? Para masira kami lahat at uh, mahihina si, si BP Sara sa 2028. That's a purely demolition job. Hala tama. Ano bang in age of legislation na makikita mo dyan? Wala man kung nakikita. Patagal naman yung mga investigasyon na yan. Posible naman yung mangyari. Ano mo idadama yung uh, Senator Delon at saka si Marujas? Anong basis mo nga kung gusto mo idawit? Di ba? No. Walang, 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 walang ganun, walang ganun. Uh, dapat pangalanan niya kasi yung general na nagsabi sa kanya, parang tanong natin kung anong basis niya. Saan siya nakakuha ng informasyon na yan? Dapat pangalanan niya kung sino yun. Mabilog told housemakers Thursday there was a plan back in 2017 to force him to falsely link former Senators Marojas and Franklin Brilon to the illegal drug trade. 
He recounted an incident in August 2017 when he was supposed to meet with then PNP Chief Pato de la Rosa, who promised to help convince then President Rodrigo Duterte that he, Mabilog, was not involved in drugs. But right after that, a PNP colonel warned him not to go to Camp Crame because his life was in danger. Mabilo claimed his wife also received a text message warning that their house was surrounded. Now their family fled to the United States soon after and stayed there in self-exile for seven years. Mabilog also claimed Duterte's controversial narco list was weaponized to target his political enemies. Senator Bato de la Rosa is set to be at the PDP assembly himself and he joins us now over the line. Good evening, Senator. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong oras. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat at um, uh, maraming salamat din sa inyo. Okay, Senator, yun nga po, kayo po ay nandyan sa PDP assembly. Uh, maari po ba namin malaman kung meron ng opisyal na slate ang PDP na nai-announce po? Oh, wala pa, wala pa. Uh, part pa yan sa pag-uusapan ngayon dito. Uh, oh, pero may nakita po kasi kami mga litrato doon sa stage. Ay, hindi po ba yun yung, ano, uh, yung slate ninyo? O sino po ang nandyan? Ah, <laughs> hindi, hindi yung slate. Yung mga PDP officials yan na uh, yung mga officials yan na yung PDP yan nakalagay. Hindi, hindi yung slate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, who, who is there with you in the National Assembly? Ito, kakarating ko lang. No? Bababa ko lang sa... Pero plano, pero hindi ko lang sabihin nyo, hindi ko pa nakita kung sino yung magkasama ko kasi tumawag na kayo, lumabas ako ulit. Hindi ko pa nakita kung sino yung nandun ako doon. Okay, maraming salamat. Sige, pumunta na lang po tayo dito sa ating ano, uh, hot topic for today because uh, of the testimony of former Iloilo City Mayor Jed Mabilog uh, implicating you. Uh, first, gusto ko lang po i-iklaro, no? uh, was uh, the former Iloilo City Mayor on the narco list? When you were PNP yeah, chief? Uh, uh, as far as I know, nandun siya. Kasama siya sa litahan. At, uh, oh, paano naman yan? Uh, Balitang-balita naman yan doon sa, ano, sa ilo-ilo. Yung kanyang sitwasyon. Uh, kaya, kaya siya umalis, di ba? Mm -hmm. Dahil nga, uh, sa pangalan niya ay nasa uh, 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 drug watch list. O kayo po ba ay magkakilala mm -hmm. uh, ni ano ni ni Mayor Mabilo? Doon ko lang siya nakilala no ako na din chief at bumisita ako sa Iloilo City no. Bisita ako sa Police Regional Office 6. Mm -hmm. Doon kami nagkita at uh, from there eh, nag-uusap na kami sa cellphone at tataw tumawag na siya sa to tawag na sa akin. Uh, when his name was put on the narco list did he ever ask you for help? Or ask you why his well, name was uh, on the list? Uh, 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 he was just worried. No, yung, yung last namin na usapan, yung bago siya nag-disappear, tumawag siya sa akin na worried na worried daw siya sa kanyang sitwasyon. Uh, sa, worried for his safety. So sabi ko, o para mapalagay ka, punta ka doon sa krami mm -hmm. at wala mangyayari sa'yo. Safe ka dito. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sabi niya, sige sir, pupunta ako dyan, pupunta ako. So, papunta na doon siya. Then, uh, later on, tumawag ulit na hindi, hindi na lang daw siya pupunta dahil may nag-advise daw sa kanya. Eh, sabi ko, sige, kung ayaw mo pumunta dito, sige lang, okay lang. Opo, so, pinatotohanan so, yun niyo na, po yun ano? Yun na, nawala na siya, nawala na siya. O, pinatotohanan so, niyo po itong phone call na sinasabi hmm. po niya, gumamit daw siya ng public phone nung nasa Japan siya pa. Ay, oo, na, natawagan niya kayo. Tapos sa uh, yun nga po sinabi sinabi niyo na alam niyo inosente siya na hindi siya involved dito at tutulungan niyo siya. Yun daw po ang sabi niyo. Hindi ko hindi, hindi ko naman masasabi na inosente siya pero as far as I know yung aking uh, personal impression na sa kanya eh disinte man siya ng tao, mahinhin, hmm. mahinahon at uh, mukhang mabait man. Eh sabi ko mukhang hindi man ito ma-involve sa droga. Hmm. Uh, Pati na din hindi ko siya sabi na Uh, walang basis yung paglagay sa kanya sa narcolist, no? Dahil nga, uh, siya man mismo ang umamin sa akin na uh, nalik lang daw siya doon kay uh, yung drug lord doon sa Iloilo City na si uh, um, Melvin Odicta. Yung malaking drug lord doon sa Iloilo dahil nga daw yung kanyang, uh, kanyang uh, chief of staff, uh, yung kanyang uh, city administrator ay nakikita daw pupunta kay Odicta. 
Kaya nalilink siya doon sa Kaudesta. Kung sabi ko, sige lang, tulungan kita yung mga... Tulungan kitang uh, maklir yung pangalan mo, kukumbisihin ko si Pakulong Duterte na matino ka na tao. Alas para sa ino, yung impresyon ko sa kanya talaga ay mm -mm. matino siya na mayor. Opo. Mm -hmm. Eh ngayon, Senator... Matino ko, ha? Opo. Hmm. Yes. Ngayon, Senator, after so many years, 2017, nung huli nyo pong pag-uusap, nagbago na po ba yung pananaw ninyo? Kasi nag-release po siya ng mga statement at uh, kumbaga nag-iba yung ihip ng hangin. Ganun pa rin po ba yung pananaw nyo tungkol sa kanya? Well, uh, wala pa kung hindi mas siguro magbago lang dahil sa kung ano yung pinagsasabi niya ngayon. Basta yung, ano yung impression ko sa kanya noon, eh, the same. Ganun lang, ganun pa rin ang tingin ko sa kanya. Hmm. Oo, pero bakit po sinabi nyo na demolition job ito kung ganun po yung pagkakakilala po ninyo sa kanya? Eh, seven, after seven years, nagbalik siya dito, ano, nag-testify. He says his life was na, in danger. Uh, oh, 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 why oh, yeah. do you call it a demolition alam, job? Alam mo, alam mo yung sitwasyon namin ngayon, no? Hmm. Uh, nakikita ko. Yung, yung mga, kaya kung sabi yung demolition, dahil uh, ano, ba nang, ano ba yung ginagawa yung investigasyon niyan? Bakit uh, sila lumalabas na yung mga... mga drug, uh, drug lord at mga drug lord protectors noon ay uh, parang uh, lumalabas na silang hero nga. Sila kiniklir yung pangalan nila. At kaming mga drug, uh, anti-drug uh, enforcer ay parang kami ang hinahabol. Kami pinapalabas na masamang tao. So, uh, what's this? Is this really demolition? Diba? Mm -hmm. Ano pa bang tingin mo dyan? Eh, eh, yung tila, tila naging hero na yung mga drug lord at drug lord protectors. Kini-clear yung pangalan nila. Kinagamit pa yung mga committee dyan sa warehouse. Tapos kaming, kaming naghihirap na binubuis yung buhay namin sa, sa baho dito sa anti-drug. Kami mga anti-drug uh, yeah. uh, mga anti-drug na uh, enforcers. Eh, kami na ngayon ang parang lumalabas na uh, masamang tao. May kasalanan. Yeah. Diba? Uh, mm. Oo. Oh. Uh, Senator, uh, we're running out of time, but change topic muna tayo. No? Let, let me ask you about sige, the, sige. The, the big breaking news this evening. So, na-confirm na po ni former spokesman Barry Gutierrez Amin that uh, Vice President Sarah Duterte visited former uh, Vice President Lenny Robredo in Naga City today, this afternoon. Uh, si Gutierrez, Barry Gutierrez said that it was a personal, not political visit, but, you know, it, it did last an hour pa rin. I wonder if I could have your comments on that. What do you think about that? Maganda, maganda yan, maganda yan. Kasi sa ating bansa, dapat yung mga pinikilalang leader ay dapat magkakaibigan, hindi mag-aaway. Maganda yan for the Filipino nation yung para mabawas-bawasan yung... Uh, problema ng ating bansa and yung puro away na lang yung mga leader natin. Maganda yun. Ako rin, galing rin ako doon sa Naga City kanina. Hindi lang kami nagtangabot ni Vice President uh, Sarah. Ano po ginawa niyo doon? Ano po ginawa niyo sa Naga? Ay, nakipinipran siya tayo doon. Mm. <laughs> nakipinipran siya dahil na uh, <laughs> ay kung may time ako talaga, pa, panata ko yan eh. Mm. Yung uh, pinipran siya na yan, uh, kung may, may time lang, ngayon na yun. Nagkaroon ako ng time dahil inibitahan ako doon ng, pa, ng uh, mayor doon na mag uh, parang groundbreaking ng uh, plaza nila, yung project ng right. na -invite ni kayo plaza sa, nila. Hindi kayo na-invite sa meeting ni, nila, ano, nila VP? Hindi na kasi ma maaga yung flight ko pabalik sa uh, Manila. Mm. Maaga. Pero na-invite po kayo? Uh -huh. Hindi lang kayo pumunta? Hindi, 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 Uh, hindi, hindi. Senator, but but it's cur medyo curious sa satin uh, political observers because we didn't even realize. I mean, you said it's good because it, you know, it's good for leaders to be friends, but we didn't even realize that the two vice presidents are talking. If I recall, uh, a few years ago, pa nga, si former uh, si Vice President Sara Duterte once called former president former VP Robredo uh, fake VP. So we thought there was. Uh, you know, bad blood. So we didn't even realize they were talking. You don't think that's curious na dinalaw siya in Naga City? Well, uh, as I have said, no, ma maganda yan. Magan maganda yan. Nagkaibigan sa hindi ka siguro pupunta si Vice President Sara doon para magsabunutan sila, di ba? Pupunta siya doon para mag-usap sila at magkipagkaibigan. So maganda po yun. Uh, that's a good sign for uh, leaders yeah. to with, befriend with each other. Meron na silang ano eh, pagkakabandingan, pareho silang nabawasan ng budget.
Hindi, panahon panahon ni panahon ni Dipili ni hindi ba siguro binawasan yung budget niya? Wala mo kung naalala na binawasan? Wala, wala kong naalala. Okay lang ang budget ng opisina ni BP Robredo nung panahon ni Duterte, pakulong Duterte yun. Oo, hindi ko naalala kung nabawasan ang budget. Mukhang wala man, wala mang binawasan. Okay. Uh, we're going to have to leave that there, Senator De La Rosa. Pero balitaan niyo po kami sa PDP Laban National Assembly, please. We're, we're... PDP na lang, PDP. Oh. PDP, yes. Oh, Magkahiwalay na yun. Oh, yes, yeah. sorry, 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 okay. sir. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Thank Maraming you. salamat, ha. Thank you. Dagang salamat, Senator. Okay, as we were just saying, Vice President Sarah Duterte was... Uh, in Naga City and had a meeting with her predecessor, former Vice President Lenny Robredo. This has been confirmed. Let's try and get more details on that visit. We have on the line Attorney Barry Gutierrez. Good evening, Attorney Gutierrez. Can you hear me okay? Good evening. Hello. Attorney Gutierrez, you sound like in a, you're very chirpy today. <laughs> Maraming ganap. <laughs> Lots to Madami talk. nagtatanong tungkol sa ano nangyari dun sa isang uh, usapan na... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Good to have you on the show again. It's been, uh, it's been a while. Oh nga eh. So, yeah. so what's mm. happening? Ano na? <clears throat> the, short, the short answer is, uh, she, si BP Sara was there in uh, Naga, apparently, to attend the Peña Francia Festival. While she was there, she dropped by BP Lenny's house and they had a conversation about personal not political matters mm. and that's it attorney naman eh you know we Sibla want more than that uh, first of all <laughs> we first of all we didn't even realize they were on speaking terms who initiated this visit right well cbp lenny learned that cbp sara was dropping by her house literally minutes before they arrived so tinawagan siya na o papunta si bp sara sa papunta sa bp sara sa bahay niyo and sempre and ang gagawin mo diba so diba she she received cbp sara and you know they had the, they had the conversation which lasted for around an hour uh, wait sorry so she was uh this was sprung on vp robredo she was surprised by the visit then yeah she was okay okay uh, but nevertheless she accepted the the visit uh could you tell us more about what they talked about i know you said it's personal not political but you can imagine the reason we're all uh, keen to know more details is because you know the optics of it is quite interesting yeah actually i think this is all about the optics but uh, as far as i know uh i wasn't there so cvp lenny told me that their conversation was mostly kumustahan diba? uh Kumusta na? Kumusta na yung pamilya? Etc. And that they did not talk about anything uh, na, pol na political in, uh, in nature. Hmm. So, but beyond that, I, I don't know. Kasi pinuwento lang din naman niya sa akin. Hmm. Si VP Roberta yung nagkwento po sa inyo, attorney. Yes. And what was her feedback about the meeting? What did you think about it? Well, more than anything else, feeling ko, she was surprised. Mm -hmm. Nagulat siya na bigla siyang pinuntahan. Diba? And as I was uh, saying, uh, nalaman na lang niya na pupuntahan siya on the way na sa, sa bahay nila. Mm -hmm. okay. But then, ang sabi naman niya, uh, they had a well, relatively pleasant conversation. Politics didn't come into the picture. So I suppose, maski yung mga dating mga banggaan in public, hindi na pag-usapan. And they focused more on kumustahan sa, sa isa't isa. Sabi I namin, baka may commonality na yung ano. Seen each other in, I think this is the first time we've actually met since 2016. In oh. That's why. That's so, why. That's why yeah. it's such a, it's, it's a bit of a shock to all of us. Uh, I, was just, I was just telling uh, Senator de La, Bato De La Rosa that, if I recall correctly, it was v Vice President Sara Duterte who once called former VP Robredo the fake vice president, right? So... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. So, so that's a. It's a big jump from that to suddenly going to her house for a social visit. Mm -hmm. So, we're hoping someone can fill yeah. in the blanks for us there. Well, I thought you should probably the, the person to ask would probably be the Sara mismo, because she was the one who initiated the visit. 
Mm. VP Lenny was simply being a good host, di ba? Uh, sinabi, pupuli siya sa bahay, and especially during Peña Francia, panay siya naman na nag-receive eh, ng mga bisita na who are in Naga for the festival. Mm. So, you know, regardless of whatever personal political history they might have had, nung sinabihan siya na kapunta na kami sa bahay mo, eh, di ba? She, she received them, and sabi naman sa akin, they had a fairly... Um, pleasant conversation <laughs> sa bahay. Sabi namin baka kasi ano may commonality na sila no kasi yung budget ng OVP <laughs> eh, eh, eh ano na eh inihahambing na doon sa budget ni VP Robredo nung panahon niya mm. na 700 million nung last year ni ni, ni VP Robredo. Yeah. Baka they have you know empathy for each other's plight. <laughs> Makaka-relate sila sa isa't isa. She, she well, it, ah. I, I, I guess the big difference is hindi kami humingi ng mas malaking budget. <laughs> Uh, but you know, the other, uh, well, si Senator Bata de la Rosa then was in Naga City today. So again, mm. talk, talking about optics, what's happening there that's got all these powerful, high-profile mm -hmm. people visiting on the same day? I know you're going to say Peña Francia, but did they always go every year to Peña Francia, as far as you know? Um, I don't really recall na nagpupunta sila doon. Um, well, except for uh, si dating uh, uh, presidential council Panelo, who is from Naga. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, sila, pero sila Bisara, sila Senator uh, De La Rosa, I don't know whether they na tumadalaw sila before. Right. I guess uh, uh, the other question would be, has anybody from the administration, any of their bets, visited uh, the vice president, uh, the former vice president? Because if you visit the VP, you can see it from the administration. Well, not that I know of. <laughs> Baka naman dahil baka naman dahil sinimulan na ni VP Sara na dumalaw kay VP Lenny the next few days kung sino sino nadadalaw sa kanya. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, move on from today's meeting. Attorney, uh, I wonder if you could talk us through something. So we just had uh, Sen former Senator Laila De Lima on the line as well a few minutes ago and she said that they did yeah. try very hard to convince former VP Robredo to run for a Senate seat next year but they clearly failed because she has opted to run for a mayoral, mayoral seat in Naga City. Uh, I wonder if you yeah. know more about uh, that and could share us more details. Uh, why, what was, uh, why was she flat out refusing to run for a national position? Well, to, from the beginning, si VP Lenny naman has been, has preferred to take on work that brings her closer to uh, her constituents. Even when she was vice president, she took great pains to transform the OVP into an office that uh, allowed her to actually deal more directly with uh, Filipinos from all over the uh, from all over the country. So now that her term is over, clearly her preference is to have a job that it's hands-on. And thinking of being in the Senate is not that kind of job from from her perspective. Besides, you have, you have to remember na. Matagal na siyang uh, inababalik eh, ng mga kanyang mga uh, kaprobinsya eh, <laughs> at mga kasyudad sa Naga. Eh. Uh, sabi nga nila, noong 2016, uh, 2022, pinahiram lang namin si Lenny Robredo para tumakbong uh, presidente. And hmm. this time around, I think, the clamor for her uh, from her closest supporters in, uh, in Naga to come back and run for a local position was something that hindi na niya pwedeng uh, i-push back uli kasi pinagbigyan na nga siya eh, <laughs> nung 20, 2016 and 2022. So, it's a homecoming of sorts and it's also in accord with um, her own preference uh, for the kind of uh, public service that she wants to do. Just to be very clear, she will be running under the Liberal Party, is that correct? I don't know. I, 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 I don't know whether uh, she's made a final decision on that, although in 2022, she did not run under the Liberal Party. She ran as an independent. So that's probably uh, an option that she will want to explore uh, when she actually files for uh, her candidacy as mayor. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, the Liberal Party also needed her, though. Uh, as I said, you, they were trying very hard to convince her because without her, then there is no clear opposition head. I mean, 
uh, at this point, it's not clear to us in talaga yung classic or traditional opposition figurehead. Uh, that didn't sway former Vice President Robredo? Well, first of all, I don't think that it's, it's true that there is no real opposition head. But when, she, when she stepped down as Vice President, one of the first things she did was actually meet with Senator Risa Ontiveros. And she publicly mm. announced that because Senator Risa is now the uh, highest elected official in the opposition, uh, she should be uh, the, the leader of the opposition. And that all of us would be looking to Senator Risa right. for leadership, which I think Senator Risa has actually displayed in the last few months, diba? taking yeah. the leadership role in multiple investigations in the, uh, in the Senate, uh, itong kay Alice Guo, itong kay Kibuloy. So, ako, I think that uh, when she uh, passed the torch on to, uh, to Senator Risa, yeah. yeah. uh, it was clear uh, that she was going to be the opposition leader. Okay, fair point. Uh, we're going to have to leave that there for tonight. Uh, but if we find out there's more to today's meeting in Naga City, Attorney Gutierrez, we're going to come back to you. Uh, we're going to call you again. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I Thank would expect no less. <laughs> it feels like there's some, you're, it feels like something's brewing. Ano, but, iba yung tawa oh, niya, eh, no? Oh, my. <laughs> Baka naman you want to break Hindi, it to I us am, now. I am just, you know, I am just, I find the whole situation amusing, eh. Di ba, na dumalaw sa bahay, biglang everybody's losing their mind. <laughs> okay. Maybe thank that you. was the point. Thank you so much for your time tonight. <laughs> Always fun to talk to Attorney Bali. It is. Right. It now, is. before we go, here's our big picture tonight. Now, imagine being stranded in the middle of the sea for a month and a half. Would you actually make it? Well, a 50-year-old fisherman, Robin Dehilo, did. He was rescued off Batanes after his boat ran out of fuel while he was fishing in the waters of Aurora. Dehilo is a resident of Infanta Quezon. He's now in the hospital receiving treatment for dehydration, malnutrition, and exposure. Mm. One month and a half. I wonder yeah. if her, his family was already, you know, giving up after a month and so not hearing from him, but, and then eventually, yeah. nahanap siya. Fortunately, right? Fortunately. Ano kaya? Medyo you know, dito inside the Philippines, tapos going to Batanes. Mm -hmm. That's very far. Um, I want to hear her story. Right. I know survive. survival. That's some serious survival tactics, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. well, well, Sana. Good, good way. Sana good way it. to end uh, yeah. this week as we it's survive. Fine. <laughs> the politics Another in the, the politics, Philippines. The typhoon, the traffic. True. And True three that. national assemblies today. Full show, but that's the show for us tonight. We are One News All Sides all the time. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good night. Great weekend.